Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, April 21st. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Looking forward to an excellent weekend as well. So let's uh, let's jump into the trades. Uh, had had not too many trades this week. Actually, implied volatility has continued to stay bid, and and price hasn't moved around around much. So we haven't been able to take off a lot of positions. We've already got positions in a lot of underlyings that have uh, high implied volatility. And I've, I've, I've had some questions about why, why is implied volatility uh, rising? You know, why, why, is it, why is it all of a sudden going up when price hasn't moved much? And, and a lot of it is due to some geopolitical uh, global uncertainty. There's some, in Europe, there's some different uh, QE, potential QE propositions going on. But mainly, uh, the, the main focus and the main reason for the uh, high implied volatility, specifically in the international indices and the currencies, is due to the French election coming up, okay? So if you, if you just Google the 2017 French election, you can read more about it. But basically, the way that it works there, unlike the U.S., where you know the, the candidates campaign for months and months uh, before the actual election in France, there it, it only lasts two weeks. Okay, and so the the ele- the first round of the elections actually starts on Sunday, okay, April twenty third, and it goes through May seventh. Okay, so there'll be there'll be different uh, kind of head-to-head standoffs between different candidates, as well as voting takes place uh, starting on Sunday, April 23rd. So look for some potential volatility um, and and some potential uh, uh, decline in actual IV, where, where a lot of this theta, I would think, will probably start coming out next week as they start to get a better idea of who uh, who's going to take this election. So there's a there's a little bit of interesting things going on, some some really different candidates, and you know they keep talking about with uh, you know with the surprise vote that happened in Britain for the Brexit, and obviously with uh, the Trump administration administration being elected here in the U.S., which was another you know big surprise to most people. Uh, you know they're they're looking at this as 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 a potentially interesting election, uh, you know, based on a lot of the changes that people are voting for around the world in other markets. So it'll be interesting to see. I'll be watching closely, uh, but uh, but just Google French election 2017 and, and you'll be able to read up a little bit more on, on what's going on there. Uh, all it really means for us, though, is implied volatility is high, which is opportunity, right? Allows us to allows us to get on more trades. So let's jump into the trades. The first trade that we made for the week was in GLD, which is the gold ETF. Uh, IV percentile when we put this on was it was at 59. So let's take a look at GLD. You can see it was it was up in this range when we put it on. Implied volatility has since contracted. Uh, and, and if we look at our analyze tab to see where we're at, we're in the profit, not enough to take off yet. So waiting for a little bit more of that theta decay to come out before we pull that off uh, as a profitable trade. So assuming it stays in our range, excuse me, we will uh, continue to monitor GLD. Next trade was we sold a strangle in EWZ. IV percentile at that time was at 54. So if we take a look at EWZ, which is the Brazilian ETF, you can see it's still pretty centered, uh, not enough profit to take off there. EWZ uh, implied volatility has, is still right around the same range as when, as, as when we put it on. So nothing to do in EWZ at this point. Uh, another opening trade we put on in soybeans. Uh, one one note that I made on the trade is we made the wings 20 points wide. Typically, I do 10 points wide, but the risk reward and the credit received just wasn't wasn't what I liked, and so I actually went out 20 points uh, because I like the the credit received and the, and the risk reward a little bit better. So if we take a look at our soybean trade, which uh, you know had that huge move down, now it's just kind of kind of uh, meandering around here. 
But remember, the imply don't pay attention to the IV percentile indicator uh, on the grains because it's it's not accurate. Really, I just I just kind of manually monitor the prices of these options and and put on trades from time to time because they are really good trading vehicles. Soybeans, corn, and wheat, they're all good trading vehicles. Just, you know, you, you gotta stay really small and uh, and just, you know, put on trades from time to time. But here's here's what we're looking at. With with just one contract, we've got a credit of $262.50, max risk of $737. So that's a good risk to reward. Remember, our total risk, I don't want to be any more than three times the credit received. So I don't want a risk to be more than three times our our max potential profit, and and so this this fits that criteria, and and I just I always want to try to have a, a position on in at least one of the grains. So got that in soybeans, no profit or loss yet, just just waiting on that one. Next trade, uh, I just sent out a, a commentary on the IBM call vertical. So I, I, I mentioned you know we'll be holding this through expiration. So what happened in IBM, for those of you who had on this trade, we had this trade on for a couple of reasons. We, a, we, we were trying to add some long delta to the portfolio because we were getting a little bit too biased to the short side. And, uh, and so we put on a, a, a call vertical to go long. Now, IBM had earnings and they missed. Okay, so, so we're, we're at a full loser on this trade. And so there's nothing to do here. I mean, I'm not going to roll this trade. It, it's way deep in the money. Uh, but the comments that I sent out was I said, okay, there, there's a chance that we could get a signed stock here. There's there's no reason to take this trade off. Okay, right? We're we're at, we're at max we're at max loss. Uh, the only thing that could happen is if if you know some far chance out that IBM comes out with some crazy good news and and spikes back up and, and we can get out profitable but there's no reason to take it off because we're always we're already at full loss right so what happens then is if we get assigned that stock so in this case in this example we did one contract so we might potentially get assigned 100 shares of stock or, or we will um, simply just on Monday morning when the market opens just exit the stock okay it's not a big deal um, your, your broker always gives you plenty of time, you know, one or two days to, to exit that stock. So all you got to do is once you get assigned the stock, uh, exit it on Monday morning. Next trade was in, and the, la, and the last trade was in Apple. So we had that on and, and we actually had that on for purposes of short Delta and Apple's just continued to stay strong. We did not roll this to May, so this was in the April expiration cycle. We didn't roll this to May because Apple's got some upcoming earnings and I really didn't want to hold Apple through earnings. Their earnings have continued to be strong. Now, you know, we, we could have rolled it and Apple could miss and, and we could have got, you know, all that all that loss back. And, and if that's if that's your assumption and you want to do that, go ahead. But but for this case, I did not want to do that. So we had Apple on for the case of that short delta and because we wanted it in our portfolio at the time we put it on, then we rolled one more time and it just, it, it's continued to stay strong. So we never were able to get back down. And, and that's just part of trading. You know, it, it's really, I can't emphasize this enough. I know I kind of beat the dead horse on this topic, but you've got to keep your position size small. And remember on our, on our income trades, like iron condors and strangles, those are really high probability trades, but these directional trades, they're not high probability. So, so you need to make sure that you're keeping your position size really small, especially on these directional trades. And if, as you do them over and over and you keep your portfolio delta correct by adding some of these directional positions in and you're putting on and you're taking off your income trade, your profit is going to, I mean, it, you know, for me, it's always, it's always been positive, you know, over, over the long run, but you're going to have short periods of time like, like this when you're going to take a loss, it's going to be frustrating, but you know, it's just, it's part of trading. You can't, you can't not have losers. So just keep, keep that in mind, keep your position size small. So those were the only trades that we made for the week. Like I said, pretty quiet because we have a lot of positions on. And our theta just really hasn't come out because of that upcoming French election uh, volatility has stayed bid. But let's go over our other positions. So I mentioned soybeans, Apple. Okay, so EFA. 
which is the international index. It's kind of like the Dow for the international stocks. Uh, you can see, you know, based on the French election, again, this is an international index. So a lot of these stocks are, are in Europe and Asia and other countries. And so uh, applied volatility, extremely high. If we take a look at that, still very centered, uh, not enough profit to take off yet. EWW, which is the Mexico ETF. These are, we've got a couple strangles on that we had adjusted and we're, we're still just kind of continuing to wait, let that fade to decay. I'd like to get a move down to under 50. If I get about $400 or so in profit on, uh, on this strangle, this is an inverted strangle that we rolled from April to, April to May. Once I get up about 400 bucks, I'll look to take that one off. And on the other uh, position, which is a ended up being a straddle, which we had rolled the puts up and then rolled out to May, <clears throat> both to the 52 strike, so it ended up being a straddle. Uh, just looking for a little bit more profit here. Um, I'm not going for the full 25% of max profit. This is really just kind of in defense mode from our original position. So once I get up a couple hundred dollars on this one, we'll, we'll go ahead and take that off and end up being profitable on that trade after adjusting and rolling. EWZ uh, the, is the Brazilian ETF, another international index. You can see implied volatility percentile still at around 58, uh, still very centered. FXE, which is the Euro. Uh, this, this one, if you look at the uh, implied volatility, this thing's been pinned at 100 for the last week or so. And again, this, this is uh, in relation to the upcoming election and the uncertainty surrounding that. So again, you know, I, I, I did have a couple questions from members saying, man, it, you know, this uh, you know, the IV in, in uh, FXE is maxed out. The IV percentile is maxed out. And that, that's not true. You, you can't think of it like this because this can be pinned at 100 for an extended period of time. And as we're seeing here, the options continue to expand in price because we're, we're showing a little bit of a loss here. Even though it's very centered, our profit lines moved down because the price of the options has continued to expand uh, going in, going into the election, uh, going into the election. So, just keep that in mind. You still got to keep your position size small, even when implied vol, even when the indicator is showing uh, levels of above 90 and 100. Do do not load the boat on the position. Okay, you've got to stay small and continue to stay mechanical, and and trade trade the positions uh, relative to your account size. So we've got we've got two strangles on here. Uh, this is the first one. The next one is right here, so so also very centered, and you know the whole thing with that is as implied volatility continue to increase, we want to scale our positions into that high IV, uh, and now we've you know we we could actually uh, put on another strangle, uh, but I think a lot of this theta might come out next week. We'll see. Uh, next trade we went over GLD, IBM, IWM. We've got this iron condor on, kind of hanging out up here. Need a little bit of a move down to take that one off for a profit. Same with the Qs. Got an iron condor in there. And then Snap. This was one of our trades of the week that we did live. By the way, don't forget, Monday morning, 825 Central, before the market's open, we'll do our live trade of the week, uh, which is broadcast and streamed live from our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So this is one, one that we put on about 75 bucks in profit. Our max profit on this is about 440. So we want about 25% of that. So we want a little over hundred dollars, 125 bucks in profit before we look to take that off. And, and Snap has, uh, has an earnings announcement, earnings announcement on 510. So remember, this is, this is an IPO that just came out uh, a couple months ago. Okay, so it's never had an earnings announcement. So this is the company's very first earnings. We will absolutely be taking this trade off before the earnings announcement. So if even if we're not at 25% of max profit, wherever we're at in the trade, winner or loser or break even, whatever it is, we're gonna take this off before May 10th. So stay tuned for that. SPY, we've got an iron condor, just kind of hanging out right here. Not enough profit to take off yet. TLT. We got a strangle on here, just kind of staying centered. If you take a look at the IV and TLT, 
it's up to 73 so again continuing to, to stay high we'll see if that election has any effect on TLT and the bonds as far as theta coming out we'll see I, I'm assuming theta is going to come out across the board but but we'll see I mean if you look at SPY which is the S&P 500 right the largest 500 stocks in the US you know, does the French election really have much of an effect on those companies? Well, yeah, some because uh, U.S. companies are, you know, most of them are now global, global companies and have exposure in Europe. So, you know, you may be asking, well, why, why do we have high implied volatility on stocks over here if it's a French election? Well, we live in a global economy. And, and so I really think, you know, that's going to affect uh, the, the, the implied volatility across the board once we once we have a better idea of what what's going to happen in that election, uh, but again, it, it it's over a two week period, so we may not it may not happen until you know after after the May seventh um, final part of the election, but we will see. XLF, which is the financial sector ETF, applied volatility right at about fifty eight at this point. We have a straddle on in XLF. Looking for about 25% max of max profit to take that off, so you know we want uh, we want over 100 bucks. So not quite there yet. We're at about 80, and then XRT, which is the retail ETF. This is a an adjusted strangle that we had rolled, still hanging out, kind of up up here, down a little bit. Uh, need a need a contraction in IV and a, a little bit of a move down in XRT to take that off. We look at the implied volatility in XRT right around 79 at this point. So still continuing to stay high for us. So we've got that strangle and then we've got one other position on in here as well, which is an unadjusted strangle that we, that we put on. Got a little bit of profit there, not enough to take off, need a little bit of a move down. So we'll continue to wait on XRT. So hope that was helpful. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, watch the futures on Sunday evening when they open up at five o'clock. Uh, I think we'll probably see a little bit of volatility because that's when the, that election starts. So we will see. Should be interesting. Uh, have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.